In this video, we're going to talk about graphing square root and cube root functions, and we're going to talk about how to do some transformations as well as working with a table to get some good uh, graphs of these two functions. So let's go through these examples together. The first example, we've got y equals 2 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So what I like to do with these uh, radical equations when I'm graphing them is make a table, and with the square root function, numbers that you're going to want to use or memorize, these are easy to take the square root of, would be like 0, 1, 4, and 9. Square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, and we're just working with that parent function, y equals square root of x. Now, when these equations are in this form like this, the a, the number here in front of this radical symbol, that's going to be your vertical stretch or shrink. So if a is greater than 1, it's a stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, is a shrink. If it's a negative number, it's going to reflect it over the x-axis. Okay, The h is going to shift it left and right, but it has like the opposite effect, meaning if it's like minus 2, you're going right 2. If it's plus 2, you're going left 2. And the k value is shifting the graph up and down. If it's positive, it shifts it up. If it's negative, it shifts it down. So now if we take a look at these basic values, and we say, okay, what does this 2 do to the graph? Well, the 2 is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. When you stretch it vertically, that's affecting the y-coordinates. So we're going to multiply all these y-values by 2. So 0 times 2 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6. I'm just going to cross out those old y-values. Now, let's take a look at the minus 1. So when it's grouped with the x like this, it has the opposite effect. What I mean by that is, you know, minus 1 is actually going to shift it to the right one. So if it was plus 1, we go left 1. So in this case, we're going right 1, which means I'm going to add 1 to the x values. So that's going to be 1, 2, 5, and 10. Let me cross out those old x values. And then lastly, this plus 2 is going to shift the graph up 2. So that means it's going to affect the y coordinates. I'm going to add 2 to all these y coordinates and I'm going to cross out the old ones. Now I have the coordinates of our graph and we can plot it and graph it. Now, one thing that students sometimes ask is like, should I do this first or this first or this first? You can do, when it's in this form like this, you can do the vertical stretch, shrink, or reflect first, and then this horizontal shift next, and then the vertical shift last. Or you could do this one first, and then this one, and then this one. The main thing is you want to make sure you do the vertical shift uh, up or down last. You don't want to do this first, otherwise you're going to get the wrong graph. So let's go ahead and plot this. So we've got 1, 2, that's going to be right here. We've got 2, 4, which is right about here. And we've got 5, 6, which is 3, 4, 5, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is right about here. And lastly, 10, 8, which kind of goes off our graph, but it, the graph is basically going to look like this. So you can see that it only goes in the one direction. If you know the parent graph, it looks something like this, where it's uh, at the origin, it's going to the right. And so you only want to go in that one direction. Now, sometimes they'll ask you a question about the domain and the range. The domain is what the x values can be. And you can see that here, it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 1. So you could write it like this, greater than or equal to 1. Or if you want to write it in the interval notation, you could say including 1 to positive infinity. And then the range, the y values, you can see it's at 2 or higher. So we could say that the range is y is greater than or equal to 2. Or if you're using the interval notation, you could say from 2 up to positive infinity. Let's take a look at a cube root graph now. We're going to work with uh, the graph when it's in this form here. Okay, for example number two now, we've got y equals negative one-half times the cube root of x plus three minus one. How do we graph that one? Well, the first thing I like to do is look at the parent function. So we're looking at y equals cube root of x, and we want to pick numbers that are easy to take the cube root of, like negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. So you might want to memorize these. And then when we take the cube root of negative 8, we get negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of uh, 1 is 1. And cube root of 8 is 2. OK, now let's go ahead and look at our transformations. So we've got this negative. Now we know the negative is going to reflect the graph 
over the x-axis here. So when it's in front like this, it's making all the y values the opposite, which reflects it over the x-axis. The one half is gonna be a vertical shrink by a factor of a half. We can do this all in one step here by multiplying these y values by negative one half. So that's gonna give us positive one, positive one half, zero, negative one half, and then let's see if I can erase this here. That's gonna be two times uh, negative one half, which is negative one. So let's cross out those old y values. The plus three, notice it's grouped with the x, it's gonna affect the x axis direction, left and right, but it has the opposite effect. What I mean by that is the plus three is actually gonna shift it to the left three, which means we're gonna to wanna to subtract three from the x coordinates. So that's gonna be negative 11, negative four, negative three, negative two, and five, let's cross out those old x values. And then the minus one is gonna shift the graph down one, which means we're gonna subtract one from the y coordinate. So this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be negative a half, this is gonna be negative one, this is gonna be negative one and a half, and this is gonna be negative two. Let's cross out those old y values. Now again, remember, you wanna do it in this order like the A and the H and then the K, or you could do the H and then this A and then the K, but you wanna make sure that the vertical shift up and down you do last, otherwise you'll get the wrong graph. So let's go ahead and plot these points. So negative 11 comma zero, let's see where that's at. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, negative 11, zero would be right here. And then negative four, negative a half, let's see, two, four, negative a half is right about there. Negative three, negative one, which is right here, and negative two, negative one and a half, which is right about here, and then five, negative two, let's see, two, four, five, negative two is right about here. So our graph, it looks like this. And remember the parent function, it looks like this. It goes up to the right, kind of has that S shape, but this one's kind of going down to the right because we reflected it over the x-axis. We did a vertical shrink, so we kind of squeezed it like that, and then we shifted it uh, left three and down one. So that's uh, why the graph looks like that. So if you wanted to ask yourself about the domain and the range with the cube root functions, it's always gonna be all real numbers for the domain because it goes left and right forever and ever. And the range, same thing, it gradually goes up, gradually goes down forever and ever. So our range values are also gonna be all real numbers. So great job if you're able to follow these couple of examples. If you want more practice and you wanna see some more examples I did, follow me over to that video I did right there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.